All right, so this is uh, this is a plugin I've had for a little while actually. I think I got it like two years ago. Um, I don't use it a ton though because it doesn't have a, a lot of practical use for what I'm doing because I'm I'm doing like a lot of electronic stuff nowadays. So I'm usually looking for really clean sounding, um, like really finely EQ'd, uh, high quality drum samples. So <clears throat> this is more like you know, bottom of the barrel, kind of like raw reproductions of live drum sounds. Um, it's called Cult Drums 2, and it's by a company called Ugritone. Um, I don't really use anything else from them, except for like a reverb plugin that I have called 1989 Verb, uh, which is a really good plugin. Um, but this is one of their drum plugins, and uh, I can't get the whole thing on the screen because I'm running out of space here for where to put this little tripod, but... Um, yeah, I'm not, I don't use, I don't use this plugin a lot, but I more or less just downloaded it because it was on sale. It was only like $45, um, a couple of years ago and I more or less just got it because I thought it was kind of cool and I really like the, uh, the garage sound that it has. Like it literally sounds like indistinguishable from a real drum kit. Um, so it's got some cool features and I'll go through, I've prepared like a little MIDI segment uh, up at the top here, uh, there's a little MIDI track of drums that I've programmed in there. Um, so we'll bring this back up, uh, the UI here, and we'll kind of like take you through the plugin for a second, and I'll play this beat back, and we'll go through some of the drum kit presets. No, cat, no. No! Say hi. Say hi. Okay, now go. Freaking cats are just always invading the studio. Anyway, uh, so I'll start going through the presets. So this is the default kit sound. Um, it does use a ton of CPU. Um, so you might hear some little glitching uh, here and there because I am running a bunch of other plugins right now as well. But uh, anyway, here it goes. And it's got this little knob right here called Humanize, and if you adjust this knob, it actually plays around with like the velocity and sensitivity of each hit that you've programmed in with the MIDI. So if you turn the Humanize dial right off, all the way to the left, um, it sounds, you know, a lot more velocity consistent and like a lot more synthetic and therefore not real. Um, but if you adjust it, the more you adjust it to the right or all the way, it sounds very human because it's a, it makes it sound a little bit more imperfect, a little bit more inconsistent, a little bit more like a real drummer. So I'll play around with that so that you can hear the difference. So this is with the uh, human eyes feature turned completely off. Uh, so this is 100% uh, computerized function. You notice all the drum and cymbal sounds are very consistent, like exact velocities, right? Uh, so it sounds a little more synthetic. So now I'll play with it and I'll take it more to the right and you'll hear how much more imperfect it sounds. So yeah, um, that's with the humanized feature there. Yeah, I think you can tell the difference pretty clearly. Um, so I usually leave it at around 50%, sometimes sometimes 60, uh, depending on the kit, um, because it it's it's nice to kind of. I think it sounds the best when you more or less balance it between the humanized and synthesized kind of sound. Just I mean, because at the end of the day, we're producing, right? And we want things to sound good and sound convincing. Um, 
<laughs> I should say, we want things to sound good and also convincing. Um, things that sound good don't always sound convincing uh, with audio. So that's, uh, that's where you run into why features like this humanized knob are actually really useful. Um, so let's go through some more of these presets. That was the default kit. This is Metal Finland 2002. So maybe, I don't know, maybe like some, maybe like some Finnish speed metal type stuff. Oh, that's gonna... A little bit louder, crackier snare. This is Mexico 1998, this one's called. Let it load for a second. Extremely, extremely uh, snappy snare. I really like this one. Uh, this one's called Mysterious Satan. Uh, this is definitely like the uh, early 90s black metal stuff. A uh, lot of reverb on the snare. I, I like this one the best. Reminds me of like uh, early Cradle of Filth stuff. Um, so I dig that. This one's called Norwegian Chicken Shack. Uh, it's a little, little greasier, a little boxier. Definitely more garage. Probably useful for like uh, that, like converge style, like a uh, hardcore punk kind of drumming. This one's called Ride the 85. Um, I believe it's influenced by, in the name, by Ride the Lightning, the album by Metallica. The snare is a little rounder, a little boxier. Kick is like a little bit beefier. The cymbals have a little bit more swell to them. Um, other than that, I don't know why it's called Ride the 85 because Ride the Lightning came out in 1984, so. That's just me being a nerd, anyway. It does sound very, like, very convincing, uh, 80s death metal, like, uh, like the band Venom, um, and very, very early Slayer, I would even put forward. Seattle 1991, maybe a, a little bit of homage to uh, the, the Seattle noise, uh, noise scene and uh, early, early grunge. Not exactly getting a Dave Grohl vibe from that. <laughs> But uh, I guess I could see it in uh, some of those old bands. This one's called Saint Ranger, <laughs> which is hilarious. It's, it's obviously a homage to the Metallic album Saint Anger. Um, and I think it's funny that they call it Saint Ranger because the snare does have such a ring to it. And I think they captured um, this uh, sound from this album. If you, if you know all the inside jokes about the production quality on that album, I, I think you'll think this is hilarious. <laughs> It's so accurate. Loading, loading, loading. Yeah, man. Oh man, 
man, it's so accurate that gay, gay, gay. in the fucking snare. It's so good. Sve Mama, nineteen ninety. I think this is the one I was getting some like entombed AD vibes from. Definitely some Entombed vibes for sure. Tampa, 1992. Uh, so this is obviously uh, maybe a little bit uh, Cannibal Corpse. Definitely very early Cannibal Corpse there. Thrash 1989. Uh, this one kind of reminds me of like uh, like Morbid Angel, like kind of like Altars of Madness, like that time period. Definitely, definitely there. Uh, this one's called Vegan Tough Guy. <laughs> and I don't know how to describe it other than uh, it's definitely more of a higher tune, so it's a lot snappier. Uh, even the toms are a lot snappier. The kick is very sharp, uh, very high EQ, high end EQ there. L lots of treble overall on just about everything. That snare actually might even be more hilarious than the, the Saint Anger snare. Alright, this one is called True Cult. Uh, I am led to believe from the message boards that this one is the most um, genre-oriented to the uh, like old-school death metal genre. Yeah, there's definitely some mayhem and emperor present there. Even again, like some entombed in there for sure. And this is the last one. This preset's called this kit's called Cardinal Kings. Let's give it a sec to load here. Lots of CPU. Anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's cult drums too for you. Um, I, I think if you're like recording metal music, I think it's totally worth downloading this. Um, just make sure you have at least 16 gigs of RAM if you're gonna run it. Um, I have 16 gigs of RAM on this computer, uh, and as you heard, it still takes a little bit, a little while to load some of the samples. Um, so yeah, this this plugin does use a ton of CPU. Um, to the point where if you have less than 16 gigs of RAM, um, you're going to run into problems running it with other plugins. Uh, sometimes it just doesn't run with other plugins. Anyway, that's my review of Cult Drums 2. Uh, I might review some other plugins. Um, I, I also downloaded some of the other uh, Ugratone stuff. Uh, I haven't installed it yet, but uh, I could review that as well. So. I'll pop that up sometime later, and thanks for watching. Hope you guys like this.